Hello everyone, this is Professor Vishal Gupta at the USC Marshall School of Business. This video is with BUAD 425, Data Analysis for Decision Making. In a previous video, I showed you how to use a pivot table to create the confusion matrix of a binary classifier in Excel. In this video, I'll show you an alternate method to create the confusion matrix using Excel's COUNTIFS function. Let's get started. You'll see I'm still using our same loans data set from class. If you don't have this spreadsheet, you can download a copy from Blackboard. I'd like you to recall that in column A, I have the actual status of each loan, i.e. whether each loan actually defaulted or paid historically. Ones denote defaults. And in column I, I have what our linear classifier predicted for each loan. So for example, for the row in loan two, our linear classifier predicted this loan would pay and it actually paid historically. You'll notice to the right, I've created a blank confusion matrix for this example. We just need to fill in these four values. And remember, this value corresponds to the number of loans that we predicted would default and actually did default. Excel's count if and count ifs function are perfect for computing these sorts of things. They count the number of cells that satisfy a certain condition. So just as an example to get us started, suppose I wanted to compute the number of loans that defaulted in the data set. I could do this using Excel's COUNTIF function as follows. I could write equals COUNTIF, pass to it column A, because remember column A is the number of loans that actually defaulted, and ask how many of these loans equal one. And I put, or should have put, quotation marks around the equals one. Let me show you the formula one more time. And you can see Excel now has counted that 1,533 of the loans defaulted in the data set, i.e. 1,533 of the cells between A2 and A9579 were equal to 1. Suppose now that I wanted to figure out, for example, how many times did my linear classifier predict default? I could do the same thing and write equals count if. I would this time pass a column I, because again, column I is what my linear classifier predicts. And I would ask how many of these cells equals one. And Excel would tell me that of the cells between I2 and 19579, 4248 of them equal one. All right, now let's go back to our confusion matrix. The only difference between what we need here and what we just did was that I have two conditions to satisfy. I need to actually satisfy both of these things simultaneously. I should predict that the loan was going to default and it should actually default. To do this, I can use Excel's count ifs function. Notice there's an s and ifs because there are multiple conditions that I want to satisfy. So what I'll pass to count ifs is I'll say I would like to see how many of the loans actually defaulted, passing column A, so how many of these equal one? And in addition, I only want the ones who are in column I, I also equal one. If I do that, I can see there were 972 loans where the, this cell in column A was equal to one and the corresponding cell in column I was equal to one, which is exactly the number of loans that defaulted, that we predicted would default and actually did default. I can write a similar formula for the other four cells. I'll just copy it from here. If I want this cell, this cell should be the cells that I predicted would pay and actually default. So column A should equal a one and column I should equal a zero. Similarly, if I want this cell, this cell should be the cells where I predicted a default but actually paid. So column A should be a zero, and column I should be a one. And finally, here I'll look for the numbers where column A is a zero and column I is also a zero.
And that's all there is to computing the confusion matrix using countif statements. Again, if I wanted to compute the accuracy, I can do so by just looking at the sum of the number I got right out of the total number of cases. And I can see that for this linear classifier at a threshold of minus 11, I got about 60% of the cases right. Now before I wrap up the video, I just wanted to point out an advantage of using count ifs instead of pivot tables for creating a confusion matrix. As discussed in class, we often want to tune this threshold of the classifier in order to maximize our profit or our accuracy. And you can do this by simply changing the value from let's say minus 11 to something like minus nine. When we did this with pivot tables, we then have to hit refresh on, on the refresh data under the pivot table menu in order to get a new confusion matrix. But you can see here, when I use count diffs, as I change the, the threshold, the new confusion matrix and the new accuracy updates automatically. In a future video, I'll show you how to use this feature in conjunction with Excel's data table feature to make a nice graph of the expected accuracy or expected return for different values of the threshold. If you want some practice, I suggest you create the confusion matrix now using count ifs using the tree prediction. There'll be a solution on Blackboard online if you'd like to compare your answers. Good luck and let me know if you have any questions.